Canada. I am Sandra Asan to Top Stories. Ethiopian suspends Adi Standards License. Amnesty criticizes arbitrary detention of Tigrians. Eritrean refugees fly to Western Antigua, UN stated. Ramaphosa says South African protests were planned. UN condemns child abductions and killing in Kenya. Kenya leader condemns killing of environmentalists. Details of these stories after the break. Welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for staying with me. Our first story, Ethiopian media regulator has suspended the license of privately owned Adjust Standard News site over what is stem as advancing terrorist groups' agenda. The news site announced that it was deeply disturbed by the decision and had suspended operations from Thursday. The regulator said Adjust Standards was legitimizing a terrorist group as a defense force. The company that owns the newspaper, Jakin Publishing, said there was no due explanation and that it was pursuing all avenues to ensure freedom of press is upheld. The regulator reaffirmed commitment to the press freedom and said the freedom comes with responsibility and accountability. The Adi Standard has been reporting on the offensive by forces group in the northern region of Tigray, the TPLF. Still in Tigray and the right organization Amnesty International has called on the Ethiopian government to either release or charge dozens of ethnic Tigrayans who it says have been arbitrarily detained during the past two weeks. Amnesty said the detentions appear to be ethnically motivated. It said business people and their customers as well as activists and journalists has been targeted. Some have been released on bail, but many more remained on detention and their whereabouts are unknown. The detentions come after the forces in Tigray recaptured the regional capital, Mekeli, from government forces last month. Our next story is concerning Eritrea and the United Nations Refugee Agency has warned the situation in camps housing Eritrean refugees in Ethiopian North and Tigray region is rapidly deteriorating. The UNHCR says conditions have been worsening over the past two days as the fighting has escalated. It says death of at least one Eritrean refugee has been confirmed, adding there are credible reports of arrest, detentions, beating, lootings and seratic gunfire at two refugee camps in the region. It comes against the backdrop of eight months of bloody fighting between Tigray forces and Eritrean troops who were all allied to the federal Ethiopian army. All sides had been accused of committing human rights abuses during the fighting, but these reports indicate civilians have been directly caught up in the conflict too. The UNHCR says tens of thousands of Eritrean refugees are currently trapped in the camps, unable to leave due to the region's increasing insecurities while humanitarian team cannot reach them. The UNHCR has urgently called to the Ethiopian federal government and the Tigray regional government to protect the rights of all refugees. An story is in South Africa and South Africa's president, Rosero Maramaphosa, has described the violent unrest that swept the country over the past week as an assault on democracy. He was speaking on the visit to the West Heads province, KwaZulu Natal, where almost 100 people were killed. Mr. Ramaphosa said it was clear that the violence and looting has been planned and instigated and those responsible are being pursued. He said his government will not allow anarchy and mayhem to triumph. The president also raised ordinary citizens who had mobilized to protect their areas and property. He admitted some of the violence could have been avoided if security forces had acted faster but said the priority had always been to avoid deaths. Yes, we could have done better, but we were overwhelmed by the situation and had to make sure that we did not get into a situation which could have resulted in more mayhem, he stated. The violence was triggered by the arrest of the former president, Jacob Zuma. About 25,000 troops had been mobilized to restore order. We move to Kenya now, and Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has condemned the killing of Joanne Spatsbury, a Kenyan environmentalist and activist. Ms. Joanna 64, who has been very vocal about the conservation of forests and particularly the protection of the Kiambu forest, 
on the outskirts of Nairobi was shot dead by unknown people on Thursday afternoon at her home. Ms. Chwana has long campaigned to save Kiambu Forest, which has been invaded by squatters and has been cleared by private developers. The forest belonged to the Kenya Forest Service, but has not been officially designated as a forest. Ms. Chwana led environmental campaigns, including tree planting in the several forests. President Kenyatta said the government will track down her killers, calling them cowardly enemies of the nation. Still in Kenya, the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, has condemned the kidnapping and murder of children in Nairobi and other parts of Kenya. It has called for those responsible to be held to account for the additional measures taken to protect children. A man aged 20 is in police custody after his alleged confession of killing more than 10 children. Mastin Milimu Wanjala helped police recover at least two bodies of children he said has to be confirmed killing. The court has detained him for 30 days pending investigations that could lead to the murder charges. Police said he showed no remorse and appeared to enjoy killing the children. And detective says he also drank blood off some. There have been a sharp rise in child abduction cases in Kenya in at least two months prompting the government to form a special anti-kidnapping squad. Missing Child Kenya, an NGO that documents missing children, has listed 190 children as still missing. Parents have expressed concern over the safety of their school-going children. This week, at Kenya Court, I created another self-confessed killer for insufficient evidence. Mr. Onyato grabbed the national headlines 10 years ago when he confessed to killing 17 women across the country and drinking their blood. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's African News. My name is Sandra Asante. You should have a great day.